Hi! Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, welcome to another painting live stream. You got the entire Dicebreaker video team uh, <gasps> with you. What a treat! I know it's, it feels What's like going ages on? since we've all been on the same painting stream together. Like Christmas. It is like Christmas, mm. except it's unbelievably warm. <laughs> Too warm. I'm melting right now. Yeah. I'm actually dying. It is <laughs> very uncomfortably warm. But um, nevertheless, we are going to be painting miniatures for the next... <laughs> no! We're going to be painting miniatures for the next couple of hours while we, uh, we beat the heat. What's everyone painting this week? Uh, I was sort of... I wasn't really like mentally prepared for this, so I just I went out and sprayed some sigmarines because I think they are like one of the easiest things to paint in the world. It'll so Stormcast gonna... Eternals. Yeah, I'm going to have some really relaxing uh, purple boys. Lovely. Lilies, how about you? So on the last stream, um, the last painting stream, I painted this from God Tier, mm -hmm. and it's like the little archer yeah. person. I'm just doing another one of those, but they have a different pose, and I'm going to just try and do something a little bit different, different colours and stuff. Delightful. I, as the thumbnail may have already spoiled for you, will be painting Skaven Clan Rats. Uh, yes, yes. Little teeny tiny rat people, because I've got well back into painting them recently. Excuse me. Criminy. Um... Wow, uh, Rue's Garden Guide in the chat just said, I just came here after catching up on Oxbox's stream where they drank a ton of energy drinks. In interesting yeah. 180 flip here. Goodness me. Um, Can they try like every flavour of sneak or something? Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. But we've got a whole bunch of people in the chat, including Inferiority Suplex, William Ryan, Simon Rag, Astrid Johnson, EA122, Nathan Plummer, Xenogill180. Uh, uh, oh, no, I always say this one wrong. Uh, Kausch to Chowan, I'm so sorry. Mediocre Danny D, Stuart Babington, Sammy Kelsch, uh, Han Solo, Chewbacca, uh, Ash F, Sarah Francella, Josh Bunton. Astrid! Astrid's there. Uh, Scarlet Arrow Gaming, uh, lots of you in, in the old chat. Um, we hope you're having a good and relaxed week. And if you're not, don't worry, we're here to paint things at you. <laughs> And, oh, OBS has done that charming thing where it resizes everyone. It's made Lowly's big. and Johnny... Transform. Oh, you know what that's uh, Scale to it abounds. <laughs> oh, it's, no, it's... Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it it be... was actually quite funny when it was doing it um, on the last paint stream me and Lowly's did because it meant that Lowly's was getting a free zoom in every now and again. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. That ain't too bad. Right. Oh, I've got jokes, by the way. I've got jokes plural this week. Oh, good. Um, plural? Um, yeah. Oriel Gonzalez uh, says, Dicebreaker, where are Johnny's glasses? He looks weird without them. Here they are. I can't paint with my glasses on. It makes me go cross-eyed. So that's the that. Dicebreaker law for you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can add that to the wiki page. Um, yeah. Right, let's have some of these jokes then, please. Okay. Uh, so I decided that because of uh, me painting an archer that I would find some archery jokes. And there are so many good ones that I was like, well, let's just do a bunch of them throughout the stream. So I'm going to start with a great one. Uh, here we go. Members of the archery club sometimes meet at the cheese shop just to shoot the breeze. <laughs> It's, it's a tremendous crossover with cheese jokes, which are among my favourites in the world. So yes! I, will, I will point out that... Oh, God, here comes Toto. I will point out that um, that's probably the closest I've been to laughing at one of your jokes. Apart from that one that really got me, which is the, uh, the busty crustacean. That oh, yeah. Good. Well, that was actually my friend sent me that one, so... Um... She's the one... Get your friend on this there. stream, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got to say, you've set the bar pretty high there. For There's some jokes. really good ones. Okay. I'm, I'm, maybe I started with the best one. I don't know. We'll have to see. <gasps> I suspect you might have done. Are you guys drinking? Because that would help also. <laughs> no, I've got the mango thing. We got. Oh god, hello, Toto. We got some Leon for lunch because it was buy one get one free. Ooh, I am drinking. Well, for delivery or? Yeah, only Eats or something. Oh. Other delivery services are available. Damn. Hello, Toto. Toto is here. Toto. Vomited on my bed and, and peed on my carpet today, so he's he's on form. He respects really well. you. Not at all. 
Oh, look at that. We've had a super chat from Hello, I'm Duke N saying, have a great morning, DB team. Stay cool. I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I've never been cool in my life. And the British weather is not helping. It's not. The thing is, before somebody rolls in from a warmer part of the world and it's like, no, you th I just looked up in the, the weather in Brighton and London. It's not hot. Uh, is that Welsh? What? No. That Welsh accent. Okay. It wasn't a Welsh accent. It was just like a knee. Um... Uh, our houses aren't built to withstand the heat. They're designed to keep the, the heat in because of the way British weather. So you can do it. Johnny, we're ill equipped. <laughs> we're ill equipped for this. Yeah, we don't have air conditioning. And... Uh, you're going to get covered in paint. I know it's going to happen. But, um, do you ever use Toto's fur as like, um, you know, a way to like 3D? Your minis, so you could like use it as their hair or as um, 3D my minis. Is that a technical term? <laughs> yeah, 3D if I got it. You never heard that, Wheels Scrub. Jeez, man, <laughs> I thought you were into this. How does one paint like this <laughs> with difficulty? Yeah, <sighs> okay, so... all right, I know, bud. Okay, come on. How long he just wants a tin chin. There we go. You can just sit next to me, all right? Sit on the bed next to me. Yeah? Yeah? And he just keeps, like, she keeps going, sleeping in her bed, and then after a while, she's, like, obviously gets too hot because it's, like, a, it's got, like, a, it's, like, a dome thing, so it's closed off. Oh, yeah. And then she'll, she'll like, walk out of her bed and just kind of collapse outside of her bed. And then kind of slowly, like, over the hours, as the hours go past, just take a couple of steps and just lie down again. <laughs> she just can't, she's not getting very far at the moment. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, normally in the daytime I'm quite cool because I've got a fan under my desk which just blows air around the whole time, but I have to turn it off for things like this. For mm. audio oh, fidelity. I've very much got mine on. I don't know if it's getting picked up. No, you're but fine. Yeah. It's just pointed directly at my feet, which for some reason is the hottest part of my body. At all times. Depends who you very hot feet. Wheels, have you so, recovered oh, after yeah. Sea of Thieves? Asks Hatronoth. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Uh, well, we, we, got, we got our ship destroyed like three times. Excellent. Um, Aww. The first time we were fighting a ghost fleet. They're tough. They hit really hard. Yeah. The second time we were, we were also fighting a ghost fleet. <laughs> the third time... Uh, Imogen picked up a bomb and didn't know what it did and accidentally exploded our ship open. Uh, and we just let it sink because it felt, it felt like the theme of the day. <laughs> Fair enough. I, uh, I saw someone in the chat say, we always your flats haunted. It's not a ghost. It's, um, senior guides writer, Jake Green of US Gamer. Um, which means that from now on, as long as he turns up in the background... Every dice breaker stream is a collab. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah, how is Jake? He's good. Good. He's absolutely in love with the two cats. Aww. Aww. That's nice. Cats must be thrilled to have another pair of hands around to scratch him. Yeah. Apparently, um, he was, I think he was writing guides for like The Last of Us or something like that. Uh, and was like killing zombies and stuff and like having a bad time uh, because it's, you know, it's survival Scary. horror -y yeah. kind of vibes. Um, and apparently Toto had just sort of snuck into his wash basket behind him without realizing. Oh no. And he, he just like leapt out of it at some point and Jake just went, oh god. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Very good. Painting, Guys, I feel like... flesh. Do, 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 do. Uh, sorry, Lollies, I cut you off by being an idiot. I feel like you've told me this before, but I've got this paint that's like super watery. It says technical. What does this do? Uh, what's the name of it? Night Aunt Gloom. Oh, yeah. You just slap that on over um, a white base and it just sort of settles in the recesses. And it's just meant to be like two coats of that and you've got a painted miniature and it looks ghostly. It, it will give you this gotcha. effect. There you go. Um, so, you see the, so the padlocks on this guy? It's like that yeah. sort of ghosty white effect. So like the white pops through on the edges, so it looks like a gotcha. sort of... You can get a green one as well, which makes them look like Scooby-Doo villains. Indeed. Uh, so what's the, how does it differ from shade? Sorry. It's just... it's Yeah, it's basically a wash, but it's a bit 
thicker, thicker. so it, it, it imparts more of its color on it. It's, okay. it's got more pigment. Yeah. It's quite fun. Um, Dino Buckwell asks, what paint are we using? Uh, oh, I believe you have your, <laughs> have your um, answer. Basically, we, we are all using Citadel paints because it's kind of just what we have. I, I started buying Citadel paints when I started collecting Warhammer because I just didn't know of anything sort of out there. I'm slowly starting to transfer onto Vallejo because I really like yeah. A, the dropper bottles, but B, some of their shades are glorious and their glaze medium is, oh, oh my God, it's so good. So, um, yeah. yeah I've, heard, I've heard good things about Vallejo. Yeah, they're tremendous. And they're, they're quite cheap, which is nice. But, the, um, yeah. I think it's generally agreed upon that if you're looking for a starter set, um, the Vallejo starter set is really good because it's, it's pretty cheap, but you get like a massive selection of colors. Yeah. They're all varied. I will say, Whereas, though, like, I'm, I'm Citadel yeah. Shades for life. Like, Agrax Earth Shade. It's... It's, a it's the good stuff. Oh, no, it's the it's, good stuff. It's the good stuff. I think um, uh, the main thing with like the main annoyance to me with the Warhammer starter sets is that they're always sort of like they always assume you're painting one of two things, kind of thing, because hmm. they they sort of like pair them off with uh, like a model kit, so that you you'll you'll be like, oh, it's you know, here's the colors you need for your painting. Space Marines and Nurgle soldiers or whatever, and it's like, well, I'm not. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple of super chats. One from Zanzibar White, uh, lowly as you're like this one, uh, which says, "I bought a blindfold yesterday. It looked very stylish in the store, but I just can't see myself wearing it." Heard that one yesterday. Thanks for the chill stream. Since I'm in Florida now, um, Ooh. Hmm. Um, Florida, the least chill place on earth. <laughs> and hello, I'm Duke has done another super chat saying, do you three think that playing digital board games is different than playing actual board games? Also, to the gaming community, what do you think? Um, yeah. Just just very quickly, <laughs> before we move on, yeah. Zanzibar White's joke, I actually had a joke here that I decided not to tell, an archery one, but I will now tell because of that joke. Okie dokie. I'm just going to have you guys tried the new sport of blindfold archery? You don't know what you're missing. Wait. That's to you, Zanzibar White. Sorry, go on with the uh, with the discussion. <laughs> uh, do we think that playing digital board games is different than playing in a, uh, playing actual board games? Um, yeah. Big time. Yeah, it's. Uh, we were kind of talking about this on the podcast, which will be going up tomorrow. It's about how it just feels a bit different because it reminds you if you're playing something on tabletop simulator or whatever. Um, which this stream erroneously claims we're playing, by the way. Psych! Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it just reminds me that I'm not in a room playing with other people. And a lot of yeah. games are all about the atmosphere, even if they're not part of the mechanic. Like, there are games like, say, The Mind or The Crew, where being able to pick up on little signals from other people is super, super important. And if you're playing digitally, you don't get the same sense. But even with board games, mm -hmm. that you can play with no like mechanical differences online it still feels different like there are some games where the atmosphere is super important anyway so mm. yeah yeah a bunch of my friends um play secret hitler like over i don't know over zoom or something um or discord and i have never joined them for a game because for me secret hitler is just such a like I'm watching people like the way they behave and like I just feel like I want to be in the same room as people for that game yeah like I just feel like it would take away from my experience so I just haven't even bothered joining them yeah I mean they say Rick's fine but it's kind of not what but fine isn't it. great is it fine is yeah. fine yeah you know exactly ooh um Frodo Baggins has said by the way I want to give a thank you to Wheels for his video about solo RPGs I've been loving Ex Novo a bit, a lot, sorry, because I get to roll actual dice again rather than clicking a button on roll 20. Yeah, this is the exact thing I said at the start of the video. It's like, it's, it's like I've been, I've been playing more RPGs than ever since the lockdown started. Mm. Um, but then when I like, uh, when I saw that first sort of RPG bundle that kind of piqued my interest in it, um, like I sat down with, I think it was Gentleman Bandit, and like I was just drawing cards and writing things, and I was like, Ooh, physical objects. Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's been so long since I'd actually used them. Yeah, I know what um, you mean. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's it's really nice to like, even if you're not getting the shared experience of being around a table together, like it still feels like you're like all the little rituals of role playing 
um, come back, uh, especially in a in a time like this, is is a really nice thing to re-experience. Yeah. I think. I would recommend that. Um, it's a it's a list of some really good games, so I recommend checking that out. Yeah. Um, getting quite a few good questions today. Actually, Paolo is exhausted. Has asked uh, for people who are new to D and D, what book kit or set would you suggest to buy? Get the player's handbook. Um, that's probably the only thing you actually need to play D and D. It's got all the rules in it. Um, it doesn't have all of the races if you want to make, say, a, a tabaxi or a warforged or whatever. But um, you can you can basically run D and D forever with just that one book. So mm. that that is the one thing I would say is an essential if you're going to start playing Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Also, I mean, like, um, I know we're a tabletop site, but like, if if you're just buying one book because you're strapped for cash or something like that, like D and D Beyond is a really really good resource. Um, I think it's probably, although D and D, as I've probably said quite a few times, is not my favorite RPG. I think D and D Beyond is is one of my favorite um, like digital resources for role playing because it's so useful. Like everything, you can click on everything and it will it will give you an explainer or link you to the right rule or just automatically do your rolls for you if you're using the new update as well because they've got like rolling dice inside the app and stuff as well now. Yeah, it's really, really good to just keep track of everything that's going on. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can just read all of the parts of the player's handbook and stuff online as well. And yeah. you can also like buy versions of the books and things like that. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the stuff on D&D Beyond is behind sort of a paywall, which is a bit of a pain. Mm. But as a resource, it is tremendous. And it's really good with character sheets and stuff. You can just hit a button that says long rest or short rest or whatever. And it yeah. crunches that number for you or it'll do level ups for you. Uh, yeah, it's very, very nifty. Yeah, I've seen I've seen people like... Maybe they're making their first character and they're in a group. And maybe they're not together, for example. So they'll be like, oh, okay, well, we're each going to buy a player's handbook. And it's like, no, 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 don't do that. You don't have to do that. <laughs> like, if you create your character through um, Indie Beyond, you can do that for free. Like, creating a bog standard character that is in one of the races, which isn't part of an extra book or whatever, that is completely free. Um, and not only that, it. <laughs> it kind of takes away some of the abstraction of it as well, where it's just like, you can just, you know, as if you're creating a video game character or something, it just takes you through all the steps. You don't have to, um, sort of like learn the rules before you've even played the game, if that makes sense. Mm. Uh, and then you're, you're good to go and you can, you can print off the character sheet as well and it'll print it off in the proper format for you. So you don't have to then play on the, the app itself. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I, like I agree. It. It's, it's very handy. Um, like when we started first using it, I was a bit like I still print out the sheet because I'm just one of those people who likes to have Same. the the physical thing that I can write on it and stuff. Mm. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's a really really handy too. Like I use it, I do use it now um, more and more, um, especially because I don't have a printer. And so like when I play D and D games now with people, it's just handy to be able to use that and not have to worry about getting it printed out somewhere. Sorry, my foot bath just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> the poor boy has arrived at my foot bath. I'm so hot and I also have the window closed and no fan that I've uh, uh, texted my boyfriend and asked him to fill a bowl with cold water just so I can dip my feet into something so I don't faint that's, from the heat. Uh, that's, that's tremendous. <laughs> uh, so Shadow Wolf Alpha 5 in all caps asks Hi <laughs> Dice Breaker. Have you ever thought about playing the Fury of Dracula ball game? Um, I think my favorite hidden role ball game is actually either Letters from Whitechapel or Whitehall Mystery, the two from Fantasy Flight, which I think does that form- format a little better for me. Um, so I think if I was going to play something of that ilk, I'd probably go for that instead. It kind of it strips out a lot of the nonsense involved with like characters rolling and stuff. But I think for like traditional kind of games workshoppy dice rolly board game fans like fury of dracula is definitely a classic i yeah i haven't played it but it's been pretty high up on my list of of wants to try games for a long time um i've played a little bit of letters to Whitechapel, but to be honest with you i'm just not really comfortable playing anything that's jack the ripper related i just think it's a bit grotesque the fact that he's remembered more than his victims and that kind of stuff it's just a bit like Wah. so um <laughs> It's very cold. Uh, I also cold. <laughs> also Dracula is like I, very cold. One of my favourite novels. I I love it. It's so so good. So I kind of I tend to geek out about that a bit. So. That's fair. 
<laughs> so refreshing, though. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> so yeah, amazing. it's just, you know, when you like first get into cold water, it's horrible. But once you're in, it's lovely. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Um, um, good question here from Veronica Matsuko, who says, um, a bit of a tricky question, but how do you go about joining a wargaming club as someone who isn't a middle-aged guy? Um, it's quite intimidating and feels quite odd trying. I think genuinely it will, it will differ from club to club. Um, I would say that, unfortunately... Uh, one of the most sort of like gatekeepery parts of this hobby is probably wargaming. Like it's a very much a boys' club at the moment. Um, your best bet would probably, I mean, you're you're kind of limited to the ones that are local to you if you're not uh, able or willing to travel. Um, but I think most of the time these groups are sort of set up on like Facebook groups and stuff like that. You can kind of look through who's attending and see if there are people your age or people like um, who you feel a bit more comfortable playing with and stuff like that and that that will probably be a, a long way to, to jump for that but uh, yeah a lot of the time like I've, I've joined groups that are full of middle-aged men but are still very inclusive and still very nice and you yeah know, it's it kind of differs based on where you are and and uh, who you're playing with unfortunately but at the same time you know if you've got friends who are interested there's a lot of good sort of two-player starter sets where you could probably just learn with a friend and play with that friend instead if you're not comfortable going to a group yeah that's true um, because i find to be honest with you i find it a little bit intimidating sometimes when i go to uh like one of the clubs i attend and everyone's sort of getting the boards out and everyone knows what's happening and it's like oh wow yeah. i'm a big part like i'm not a big part but i'm a, an enthusiastic part of this community online but when i turn up i still feel very sort of scared yes. uh and you know I'm a, I'm a white guy. I'm, I hope I'm not middle aged yet. We'll see. Um, <laughs> so, only in only in our yeah. Like head, yeah head there space. we go. <laughs> so, but I would say if I could make specific recommendations because I believe you live in London, um, Ronnie. I would say, um, hate uh, or the hate club, which is the Hackney area tabletop enthusiasts. Uh, it is a really lovely, warm uh, community on Facebook. Um, and they really pride themselves on being uh, LGBTQ plus friendly and sort of accepting. Uh, it, the demographics do still skew really white and male, uh, which is a, an inherent problem in the hobby, but like their hearts are very much in the right place and they're a lovely bunch of people. There's also a much smaller club called Wart, uh, which is the Walthamstow area role playing tabletop. And that's kind of a lot of D&D and a bit of Necromunda, a bit of Kill Team, a bit of Age of Sigmar, Warcry, stuff like that. But again, that's sort of a friendly bunch. And I believe they play in a brewery tap room. So, yeah. Uh, we have a super chat from Adam G. who says, I'm currently playing in, I always pronounce these wrong, Aracocra, uh, the like bald eagle race in D&D at the moment. Oh, yeah. Quite fun, but the DM is a bit frustrated as I keep flying out of range of enemy attacks. Um, ah, your DM just needs to get more creative, I think, or just stop doing such combat. That's my other. <laughs> that's my other uh, thing to take away from that. Find interesting um, things to do with flying, I guess. Sorry, Lily, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to read out a, a, a message from Sam Dolby, who says, "Hi, all. It's my big thirtieth birthday tomorrow, mm. and I have some money to spend on games." Favorites at the moment are Civilization, New Dawn, Key Forge, Azul. Any recommendations? Well, first of all, happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. Wah, wah, wah. They're actually... So exciting. Um, It'll happen to oh, you two one day. Well, it's going to happen to me in two months, and I just cancelled my birthday trip recently. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Times. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. It's a sound like, Dolby. I do love this idea that, like... Me and Lolita are in the same age bracket. When actually, it's it's you two that are in the same age bracket. Yeah, yeah. and yet, and yet, <laughs> ridiculous. And yet, Johnny's an old man, and I'm not. Um, um, so, game recommendations. I mean, I I think I know. What did I read out? Oh, Keyforge and Zoo. I've only played a Zoo a lot of those games. Um, hmm. Have you guys played? I know you've played Keyforge. Have you played Civilization New Dawn? <laughs> Civ, no. Um, what, what was the other one? So the Azul, Keyforge, Civ, Civ, and... That was it, just those three. Those three, okay. Uh, hmm. I hmm. think Seven Wonders Duel is delightful. It's a two-player version of Seven Wonders uh, with sort of auction mechanics, but you're building a tableau, um, 
and it's like it's really quick. It's there's a good amount of strategy to it, but it's not too hard to pick up. I think it's have you, a sieve feel to it. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that would be up your street, to be honest. Especially since you kind of you buy cards from this tableau on the table, which is sort of um, you play as almost like upgrades to your civilization that you're building. So you mm -hmm. you're building an engine almost. Um, uh, yeah, I would say that. Delphine M uh, keeps posting and has now yeah. moved up to Caps, uh, yep. and now Caps and at tagging. Hi, Dicebreaker. I'd like some help <laughs> DMing. Do you have any tips? Um, <laughs> to be fair to the chat, like we've already rewarded someone for continuously posting and then resorting to Caps. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any tips? Um, I've got. I mean, there are already some tips videos on the channel on how to sort of start. Uh, DMing how to establish the tone in a game uh, but I would say don't get too caught up in prepping for a session uh, plan like, have an idea of where they're going and why and what the problem they have to solve is and how they're going to solve it but don't worry about planning absolutely every last detail because the chances are they'll do something you don't expect and all of that planning will go out the window anyway so I think we often get um, replies to advice like that because it's. I think it's something we often say is like you have to be good at improv kind of thing. Hmm. Um, a lot of people will, will then sort of comment and be like, well, "I'm not good at improv, so what do I do?" kind of thing. And it's it's like you you don't just begin good at it. No, <laughs> I, I think you need to be able to um, you know be comfortable with the fact that you might not be as good with it at the start, and then you'll get better. Like yeah. in me, Johnny, and and like um, me and Matt, and like anyone who's DM'd on this channel, like we weren't always the you know the standard we are today. I'm trying to say that in a way that doesn't make it sound like we're really good, like we're bigging ourselves up. But like basically, you know, like any DM that you've seen that you think is really good, they weren't always like that. Yeah. So you you have to be willing to to fail and to practice and to get better at something like that. Oh. And yeah. being flexible and being able to um, being able to react to situations is one of the most useful tools you can have. So, like, if it's something that you don't feel like you're good at, just try and practice at it. Yeah. Um, those solo RPGs that we talked about earlier that were in that list, like, they're all about answering prompts and trying to come up with cool ideas. So, like, those are a good kind of um, practice as well. Like, you're basically GMing for yourself, so there's no real risk of, like, worrying about other people's opinions because you can just be like, well, okay, I didn't like that. I can go back and change it or, you know, whatever you like. It also gives uh, we you haven't... a sense of the pace. Um, I think when you're GMing, you often think the game is going a lot slower than it is. Uh, yeah. Just try to ignore that, really. And ask your players for feedback if, if you're worried about it. Sorry, you were going to talk, Wheels. I think about Super Chats. Uh, yes, we have two of them. Um, both in bright yellow, which I'm a big fan of. Three of them now. I need to read them out before they get out of hand. Archon Extreme says, Good afternoon, you lovely people. I've been inspired by your streams and bought my first set of minis, Poxwalkers. Hey. Ask what are your thoughts on magnetizing minis for weapon swapping. It's amazing. I love it when people do that. I've never done it, but really cool. I really admire people for doing it because like, it makes your models flexible. Um, <laughs> it, it just looks cool. It's a technically impressive thing to do. And it, it, like, it gives you options. I think it's great. I'm going to start magnetizing um, my minis for storage, I think, soon. Yeah, bear in mind that... Um, it's not maybe the best idea with every single mini you get because like usually basically usually people ma magnetize things so they can be flexible about, about what their characters actually have equipped in the game right mm -hmm. so if your character only has one possible gun that they could have but just in four different poses not as important to magnetize for example i think poxwalkers just like scraps of wood and stuff so like like putting putting magnets in a poxwalker for example wouldn't be the best use of your time i don't think but it's up to you right it's, cool. it's all about I'd respect it you would for be. it, even if Wheels doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, be, be responsible and, and oh, make sure they're no. having the time. Our next super chat is from Simon Rag, who says, Hi, Dicebreaker gang. Have some celebratory pet treats. Your, can bleh, your content has... Oh, oh, God. Your content <laughs> has helped me keep sane through the last legs of my degree and managed to land an awesome grad job, which I start Monday. Uh -huh. much love. Congrats! Congratulations, that's awesome. Yeah, Especially... we're, we're very happy to provide the smallest amount of help that we had. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and... It's very impressive that you, you took that step in uh, the year of our Lord 2020, which I think we can all agree is mm. a flaming trash heap. 
Yeah, just bear in mind that any achievement that you guys have made in 2020 is even more impressive than it would have been any other time. Yeah, it counts for double. <laughs> um, Harry GTT says, just wanted to share my joy of organizing my school's games nights online in this era. We could make it work somehow. That was an obvious chat, sorry. Point out. <laughs> We've got one more super chat from Will Cornish. He says, "Well, hey, birthday stream for me. Have a lovely day with a big smiley face. Happy birthday, Yay! Will! Happy well, birthday! I hope you are doing something pleasant and that you are beating the heat and that people are not getting in your way." That's well, a, Will, I think you deserve a joke. Yeah, a birthday a, joke, a birthday but it's going to be about archery. About <laughs> what did you do to deserve that? <laughs> so my partner asked how I got invited to the archery champions ball. I told him I had to pull a few strings. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm into it. That was a that was a laugh wheels, I think. I heard it. We all heard it. Was it was a mild chuckle. Oh, stop <laughs> You try and sensible, sensible chuckle your way out of this. You laugh, <laughs> you scoundrel. It's just unbearably hot, isn't it? I don't need to so do anything. Okay, hang on a sec. Right. I feel a lot better now that I've got a foot bath. Like it's actually, it's, it's very good. It's good times. Is that going to be too loud? Can you no. hear that? I've don't got mine. Anything. You can't seem to hear it, so it should be all good. Okay. I think as long as it's not going directly into the mic, I don't think it really picked up. No, it's going. Uh, it's not. So. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not too. Uh... Oh, lots of boos in the chat. Oh, that's not fair. <sighs> I'm allowed to to dig on these jokes. <laughs> um, yeah, not to self promote, but I'm doing Twitch related things tonight. Uh, and I've purposely started at like 8 p.m. so that it's at least a little bit cooler by the time I'm going because I feel like I'm going to be dead by the end of it. Yep. Uh, yeah, good luck. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, Sam. See you in the chat, yeah? No, <laughs> uh, I've, I'm not going. I'm not going to be shackled to my desk watching watching my son play video games tonight. I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, but then you could come in the chat and you could say, "Are you winning, son?" And then, and then you could leave. Just do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can make time in my schedule. I'll pop in. Yeah. After my, my stream. <laughs> gang, gang. Oh, you streaming tonight as well? Yeah. But... Oh. I'm just watching a film. Mm. We have to make uh, our own schedule, aren't we? <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be assembling I, I try, pictures. I usually try and like time it so I'm not clashing with other people. But then you came along. Yeah, as well. I tried to time it so I wasn't clashing with Zoe because I stole all of her audience. So I thought it'd be a bit rude to to make them choose. Um, there you go. Dave Redman has done a super chat asking, "What are people painting today? How did the Pan Zero go from last week? I got an Infinity starter set and will be playing my first IRL game tomorrow." Pano. Oh, Pano. So I don't. Uh, <laughs> it went well. I ended up doing the same purple that I seem to do on every single miniature. So maybe I need to get some new paints. Um, but yeah, I think there's still some work to do on on the Night of Justice model I was painting last time, uh, and there's still a lot of work to do on the rest of the panel guys because I haven't started on any of the other models that they have. <laughs> it's going to be about ten years before I actually have a fully painted game of Infinity. I think. If you're painting them in a rich brown, you could call it Pano Chocolat. Nice. Mm. Uh, and answer to your question, what are we painting? I am doing up some Scave and Clan Rats. Um, oh, they're coming along quick. Um, mate, I've done, I've done well over 100 of these in my time. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it is not a hardship to smash out a couple of, of ratty chaps. Um, That's a faction for you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're Age of Sigmar models. It's just, I find them relaxing to paint because I can do it with my eyes closed. I mean, not with my eyes closed. My absolute favourite thing about painting Skaven is that, like, if you do a messy job, it looks intentional because they're yep. supposed to be messy and grotty. <laughs> yep. I'm painting a figure from God Tier. Don't ask me what they're called. Uh, it's a red one. <laughs> yep. And uh, they've got long hair and a bow. Sick. So, is that? I'm also painting Age of Sigma, but I'm painting. Johnny's least favourite faction. Yeah. Longcast Eternals. 
because they were in the box. Yawn cast it. <laughs> hey. Hey. hey! Take that, armoured people. Ah, you're serving a stupid, selfish god. <laughs> Sigma's a joke. Oh. We've got another super chat from Chris Rakowski who says, I'm on I'm on holiday from work today, so finally able to paint along with you guys. Oh, Welcome, yeah. Chris. What are you painting? Yeah. What, yeah, what are you painting? I probably won't know, to be fair. <laughs> Even if you tell me. You might. But these guys will. Yeah. Sure. Oh, by the way, I I meant to bring this up earlier and I forgot. Uh -oh. um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back to an earlier conversation. We were talking about when we were talking about D&D Beyond and digital character sheets, mm -hmm. um, I started playing a game called Lancer recently. Oh, yeah. Um, which was in the, um, the big itch bundle for... Racial for quality. The, yeah, racial quality. And there was, um, there was a, a, yeah, a PDF copy of Lancer in there, which is basically an RPG in which you play as mech pilots. Um, so you have, like, two different character sheets. You have one for your pilot and one for the actual mech that they're, they're moving around in. And then you can like upgrade and like modularly build your mechs between each mission and stuff, which is very cool. Um, but they have like a whole dedicated website slash app for character sheets and that because it can be a little bit complex. Hmm. Um, but it's so cool because it's all really in character as well. Because like D and D Beyond is just like okay, you're making a D and D character. Here's the things. Whereas like when you log into that, it's like hello and like welcome to the the pilot. Uh, mainframe and then you've got like bits of code flying around and it's like choose your background and it, and instead of background it will say like um, you know input uh, like character history you know whatever stuff that you would actually find on like a like driving license application or something like that it's really really cool <laughs> good good stuff uh, Chris Chris Rakowski is uh, doing my some mystics rat warriors um, I love those miniatures it's a Good fun mini game. The game with minis, I mean. Yeah, I played um, My Some Mystics the first level on a stream, I think, once. Just makes me laugh that the uh, the hero prince is called Colin. Colin! S Colin! Go, Colin! Like, okay. Yeah, all right, Colin, dig up yourself. <laughs> Go on then, mate. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Wood! God. Long Fang Brown. Ugh, put me in a fridge. <laughs> you should get yourself one of these foot baths. They're great. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Oh, we've got an Alex Meehan in the chat. Uh oh. While searching for the term Rat King, I discovered that it is an actual thing a collection of rats whose tails are bound together by entangling material like hair or sticky substances like sap. Yeah, I've heard about Rat King. They're yeah. horrendous. I'm afraid they're also. Awesome. They are mythical. Regrettably. Oh, mythical. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, myth and history are the same thing, if you think about it, really. Mm. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's actually real, Johnny. Don't worry about it. Then why do I bother working a nine-to-five? Up to you, mate. Because it's a, it's a simulation. Yeah. If it's a simulation, who invented capitalism? What genius thought that up? Well, it's, a, it's it's a bug. <laughs> oh, okay. You gotta have you gotta have hardships and like bad guys, right? Because otherwise it's just a really, otherwise it's just Animal Crossing, and they've already made Animal Crossing. As a camp, um, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think um, human experience predates Animal Crossing by a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but like humans hadn't thought of it, and then like and then they were like, well, let's make another one. But let's get rid of all the horrible shit. Got it. Okay. Language. Sorry. Language. <laughs> we have a super chat from Joseph Michael Holland. He says, hope you're all enjoying the sunshine. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, if you could magically improve, um, if you could magically improve of your D&D &D ability scores for yourself in life, which would you pick? Um... I if, I, if I took one of my character strength characteristics, would that mean that I would lose some weight? <laughs> no, that's like... the same thing. Or, or, I don't know, dexterity or something. I would take, I would take dex, just because I oh. want to be able to do yeah. athletic stuff. 
Yeah, me too. That's a good shout. I'm not a young man anymore. Oh, God. I'm just pointing the fan directly at me now. That's... <laughs> also, just saw Ellie Bab in the chat. Oh. Uh, Hello. Saying, Hello. time doesn't exist, but the Rat King does. So that's that's me told. Exactly. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Just watched it on my break there. It's all stuck in my head. The uh, the absolute best song from that entire show, Flash, like his discography, is um, Born Naked. Born Naked is such a banger. Um, oh, Born Naked and the rest is drag. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Just so. Sorry to wrench the conversation back to D&D stats, but Mian has just typed <laughs> all in caps, CHARISMA! <laughs> Mian's charisma stat is already maxed. Yeah, you Mian, you're me. already maxed out. Don't give us that. Right, now you can go back to talking about RuPaul's Drag Race. Who do you think you are? <laughs> I'm poet. I know things. See? Hey. Eh? Chris Holland says increased strength equals more muscles, which mean which means you need more calories to sustain those muscles, which means weight loss. So technically um, correct. <laughs> well, there's plenty of strong people who are that don't at least don't read into it. <laughs> well, there's the power to weight ratio. Someone in the YouTube chat said it was correct, so Okay. So that's <laughs> fine then. So, oh, Emma Benton says I do charisma. I'm so painfully awkward in person and online, so everywhere really. That's not oh. true. You are a delight in person and We've online. We've met you. So there. Exactly. You're you're a big fat liar, is what you are, Emma Benton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Connor, Connor Watson <laughs> has done a super chat saying, "Hi guys, thanks for rekindling my board game love. Set a watch is an absolute winner." Do you have any tips yes. for making maps for a first time DM in D&D? I'm new to battle maps, but my players love them. There are Ooh. online tools that will help you. Wheels is about to talk about one that he saw in a tweet with a good animated GIF. Um, yes. <laughs> I like the... I, like. Um, I like the idea when you're making a map, especially if it's a world map, of just throwing loads of dice on the table and then drawing around them, mm -hmm. and those become land masses. So you just That's create that. a world. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's a guide on how to how to like do it. If you need like a rule set to help you out with it, there's a guide of that's that right. online. Where it's like D4s become like mountains and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, but yeah, Wheels is about to tell you about uh, an interesting online tool that's just for generating dungeon maps in a super and quick... And it's free! Mm -hmm. um, it's called Dungeon Scroll. Which is a very good pun, uh, uh, and I'm going to put a link in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's like an online editor. You literally just draw shapes, and it'll turn it into like a really old school like dungeon map for you. Um, but if you don't mind having them be a bit abstract, like they don't actually have to be dungeons. They could be like you know town buildings or whatever. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that if that's uh, if that's helpful to you. And it's free of charge, which is always good. Uh, we had a super chat also from Connor Watson, who says, Hi guys, thanks for rekindling my board game love. Oh wait, sorry, you already read that, never mind. <laughs> we Move on. do have a super chat from June Bug Arts, <laughs> ladies, if you want to read that one. Hey guys, have you ever tried blindfolded archery? <laughs> don't know what you're missing. Hey, newish DM yeah. here. I'm tired of my bosses getting wrecked, Johnny can relate. Any tips oh. for balancing encounters? Got a party of five level ones in this Saturday. There was no in, just this Saturday. Um, throw lots of smaller things at them, because chances are only one or two of them will have AoE effect things, and they will be spells. So a fighter can do 200 weapon attacks, obviously, and can you know attack two different um, two different enemies at once. But uh, if you just overwhelm them, they can't take them all out in one go. So just hit him with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Bear in mind, though, that D and D combat is slow as it is. So the more things you add in combat, the slower it gets. <laughs> Wheels true. hate D and D combat so much. <laughs> I hate all RPG combat. I don't think anyone does it right. Um, Archon Extreme has done a super chat. 
Right. Sorry, Johnny. Afraid I won't magnetize the Poxwalkers. The gold is a death guard army, so I'll do it to the others. I hope that's still respect worthy. <laughs> Thank you. Much love. And drink your paint water. Much love to you. Got eight. <laughs> Non-toxic acrylics. Although I haven't washed that paint cup in... Oh, God. I haven't washed that paint cup. So that's good. Hello, I'm Duke Ken. has done another super chat. Uh, Wheels, Alex L and Alex M, brackets in chat. I'm assuming you guys are never going to play Blood Rage, brackets, digital ever again, uh, regarding what happened last week. Haha. <laughs> yeah, no. it wasn't great. I tried to delete it like as soon as we finished, and it's it's proving hard to delete. So it just <laughs> lives there, taunting me on my on my laptop. Maybe it's a virus. <laughs> yeah. No, I really did. Like, I think I would enjoy the actual board game. Like, I did oh, I... enjoy the game. It was just I just really didn't like what they did with it. Yeah, I have, I have to say, I'm I'm now really interested to play Blood Rage, though. Yeah, like I mm. I think I think Blood Rage looks really fun, and Eric Lang's a really good designer. So I yeah. I think I might just. Yeah copy rather than playing that thing again yeah it was a it was it was fun and it was horrible all at the same time (laughs) okay is it just me or is that you know 70 percent of the working at dicebreaker experience horrible (laughs) just me then well well, well. (laughs) It was fun and it was horrible. Hey, a super chat from Elizabeth <laughs> Teresa. Ooh, check this one out. Watching as I set up my new 3D resin printer, eventually printing minis with it, since you all got me started on painting. This charisma talk makes me think of the game as Darkness Rising. Um, that is an absolute baller move to get into yeah. painting miniatures and be like, you know what this needs, though? Custom resin printed minis. Holy crap. I... Oh. Elizabeth, will you make one for me, which is like somebody just reading a newspaper on a toilet? Because oh, that's I, that's what I want to paint. I don't want to paint archers. I want to paint people doing mundane things. You that's my dream. Request custom <laughs> minis from people because they popped into the chat to say a nice thing. That's not how <laughs> this works. Well, I've just done it, haven't I? <laughs> I don't respect you for it. Goodness. Not very professional of you, Liz. I never look at that balloon. I have no idea. Oh. All right. <sighs> rats, rats, rats. It's not into a different colour now. So. Here is where I'm at with uh, the rats. I have base painted the cloth and the wood, and I've done half of the tone on the skin. Uh, so now I'm going to do metals. Uh, do the other tone on the skin, and then it will be time to wash these suckers. And we're 48 minutes in. I thought two rats would take me two hours. I was wrong. I'm going to get these done. Trying, I was trying to hint that you might want to do more than two. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was like, nah, two, two will be, three in th- two hours will be a rush. Wrong. Um, but oh well. Yeah, I'm on the other side where, like, I sprayed three models. Probably could have done with just one. Because the speed I'm going at right now is so incredibly slow. <laughs> I mean, again, I I tend to paint quite fast anyway. Uh, but clan rats, I just I cut my teeth on these things. So the second I think, nature. Uh, I'm I'm currently experiencing like that episode of Garth Marenghi where they realised that the episode wasn't long enough so they just had to put everything, everything in slow-mo. <laughs> it's looking pretty clean though. Things I'm, I'm doing it pretty slowly. Good. A super chat. From ooh, Chris Rika- Chris Rakowski, uh, saying I'm trying to set up my filament 3D printer to print minis too. Hot dang! Same question to you, Chris Rakowski. Stop it! <laughs> when I I saw Chris Rakowski's name, it immediately made me think of the slug from Monsters Inc. saying, "Mike Wazowski, <laughs> where is your paperwork?" <laughs> oh my God, I haven't seen that in years. I should watch that. Really I should have put film. that on the list. Uh, oh. 
I'm not going to lie, mate. I voted for Goodfellas because I was like, if she has to watch that live on stream, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I was like, that is so inappropriate. I want it to happen. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I, I, I was uh, foiled in my plan. Uh, Jace, like a JCB Bullock uh, said, wanted to say thank you to Johnny. Your DMing for the Ox Ventures looks so much fun and creative that I started DMing myself and now 12 weeks into my first campaign, I'm loving it. Tremendous. Aww. Well, well done to you, Frankie, for taking the plunge. Um, that's great. 12 weeks in as well, that's no small feat. Because mm -hmm. as everybody knows, the hardest boss in Dungeons & Dragons is actually trying to arrange a session of Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I also saw somebody ask if, because I put flumps in the last adventure, whether that means... Uh, that I no longer respect the Oxventurers because of uh, my comments <laughs> in the PAX panel. To be honest, I put them in there because I knew the Oxventurers wouldn't have watched that panel and wouldn't know what a flump was, and I wanted to see them react to them. But I put them in there so I could be disdainful of them all over again. It was basically a, an in-joke for the people who had seen our PAX <laughs> panel, the 10 most ridiculous monsters in D&D. &D. By the way, I just want to point out, Johnny, JCB Bullock said that they were 12 weeks into their first campaign, not 12 sessions. So that could just be one session that's like 12 weeks <laughs> organized. <laughs> okay, touche. Uh, Codename <laughs> Zero says, currently painting old school 90s Plague Marines after I bought some lead slash metal models online. They're all squat compared to the new models. Uh, yeah, Old Hammer tends to be very bunched. It's like, especially, I've, I've, I've got one or two like Old Hammer Skaven models and by comparison, the, the sort of the newish ones, like the ones I'm painting now, look like they've all been to a chiropractor. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> I, I say I um, when I first started painting Tyranids again, because I was we were playing 40k uh, when I was working at Creative Assembly. We were playing like 40k uh, after lunch and stuff, or during lunch, or whatever. Um, but Al, who um, if if people play to what they might know, because he does a lot of the sort of like uh, you know like talks at events and all that kind of stuff. Um, he came over one day and he was like, I've got these old um, Tyranny models that I never painted. Do you want them? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, if you've got like gene sealers and stuff, it's always handy. But like, I didn't realize when he meant old, he meant like first edition Tyranids, which looked like like 50s B movie villains. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the worst models. Get I've out on the table seen. wheels. Did you take them though? <laughs> Oh, I don't know where they are. I don't know if I've still got them. I want to see them I, they, still they were like them. sat in a carrier bag under my desk for about a year. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with them. So it felt bad because he was like, oh, here, take them. I was like, oh, thanks so much. And I was like, oh, these are awful. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome to Carvello's Putting Challenge. I am Carvello. <laughs> uh, I think <laughs> we've had a couple of super chats, but I am really trying to do a tricky bit of armor here. Okay. So someone else could take them. Uh, Chris Krakowski says, Lolis, I will look into making you a mundane mini. Yay! Thank you. Rank Photo is also power, back. Lolis. I'll, um... I'll gift him something back. We also have a super <laughs> chat from Toto Whelan who says, I'm a big chubby gravy boy and I demand attention. Oh, that's definitely me, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, wait. No, no, that, that's I just the actual chat. I want the actual chat, ladies. Uh, Will Chapman Gandhi says, um... More non-toxic acrylics. What are the minis? Oh, which uh, I'm, I think he's saying. What what are we painting? Um, I'm painting a Stormcast Eternal at the moment. Uh, 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 Skaven clan rats. Here they are. They are rats, and they are small and chaotic. And Loli's is doing an archer from God Tear. Yes. Yes. I never remember which way it is. Yeah. Oh, that's coming on nicely. Yeah, I haven't done any washes yet, and there'll be details, but because I've been quite messy at the beginning, well, I'm trying to do slightly different things every time I paint and try and like learn on what works and what doesn't. It's a good idea. Um, Craig B has done a super chat saying, "I still have unpainted Skaven models from the '90s." Um, Got a box of like original, um, like old World Warhammer 
uh, clan rats that's still in shrink ramp that I'm probably going to sell in like 10 years. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Hulse has done a super chat saying, Hello, Dicebreaker team. I recently purchased an airbrush for mini painting. I was wondering how many of you do a zenithal priming undercoat on your minis, and what's your favorite mini painting secret? Uh, I do. Underpainting is my favourite mini gaming. Uh, I was going to say that probably is your favourite secret, isn't it? Um, I didn't bother fully underpainting these rats. Actually, I just gave them a quick zenithal highlight, but it's it it's upped my painting game so much because it adds in so much detail and so much tonal value. But because when you're underpainting, you're only dealing in black and white. Um, you don't have to worry about being messy or getting it really really wrong. Uh, I've basically I've learned so much about light and the way light hits things and it, the way it hits miniatures uh, that my my painting has honestly gone like it's, it is noticeably improved in the few months since I started doing underpainting. So that oh and drinking my paint water. <laughs> Always drink paint water. That's the thing. Um. There's a message here from Nathan Plummer who says that uh, Luke's Bloodborne stream should be starting soon. Do we want the chat to uh, to spam their chat with messages? Um, I wouldn't uh, say spam the chat message. with a message. Just... Oh, I mean, I would. That sounds fun. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what. It must be some kind of like Bloodborne tabletop miniature related joke that we could make up. Can you tell him to look out for werewolves? Because we're going to be streaming werewolf with them this week mm. uh, there, are there we go There's also bloodborne. that's it tomorrow it's thursday isn't it i'm really looking forward to that although i was saying um that i won't know who to accuse of being a werewolf because i usually accuse wheels and he's not playing yeah so so um i've just had a follow-up message from wilf uh, apparently i misread his message supposed to sound like it's it's uh, coming from Skaven. That's why it's more more. Ah. Let me just read that quickly. <laughs> more more. Non toxic acrylics. There you go. That was oh really God. good, man. That was great. <laughs> I, I know we're both sort of lapsed Vermintide players, but we should play Vermintide sometime. Do you know what? I was just talking about this with um, with a couple of friends in CA. Um, so you should you should probably join us because we've actually got a fourth person slot open. Oh, sick! Uh, f- which hero? Which heroes are open? Well, I mean, I know that Grace will absolutely play. Um, what's her name? The Carillion Elf, Carillion. Um, I usually play Kruber, or whatever his name is, Marcus. Oh, that's so you, Mark. What? Um, <laughs> and then I think. I think Mattis quite likes to play the dwarf, Damn. which I'm assuming. Yeah, I would assume that would be. I'm a, I'm, I'm, in Vermintide One, I was a Carillion main uh, uh, with Bardin as my second, uh, but now I'm a Bardin main in two, and Carillion is second. I could learn how to play Sienna. I was going to say, if you play the uh, the Witch Doctor, then you get the uh, Holy Sigma. Bless this ravaged body. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Bless this ravaged body. <laughs> I love Have you seen that video with um, <laughs> Never Gonna Dance again playing in the background? Yes. Oh, God. So tired. Uh, you're so lappy today. And you. He's lovely. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about that. your paint water. You'll probably try it. Oh no. Oh sorry, no, I, I was washing my brush. Yeah, yeah. Did someone say drinking paint water? <laughs> that's what I meant, yeah. I thought it was drinking your paint water when I heard the What is wrong with honey that that's how you brush. think a cat sounds drinking? <laughs> <laughs> she does. She's drink. She is the loudest eater, the loudest drinker. Like you can usually hear her from like the other side of the flat. Wow. It's uh craziness you can hear watson drinking from the other side of the flat but in fairness she is a dog um she gets up oh, honey's a big cat yeah that's fair i have to be a dog sorry go on yeah. no it's, it's really boring me. sometimes i can hear the dog drinking oh sorry. Okay, Mr. Westaway is now being instructed several times to look out for werewolves. Yay! Oh, well, I reckon. Good job, chat. Excellent. Is he confused? 
Or is he just thinking you guys are talking about the game? You know, George Michael actually came up in our um, in our WhatsApp chat earlier. It's impressive. Yeah. Well, he was uh, <laughs> not from the grave oh, okay. <laughs> as a topic of conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, we were talking about celebrities who aren't Hello. apparently awful. Right. Uh, and George Michael was a very nice man. Yeah, he did a lot of charity stuff. Yeah. Also, Let's Go Outside is one of the greatest uh, pop songs ever written. Wow, that is quite a quite an accolade coming from you. Yep. Um, I mean, Running Up That Hill is the greatest pop song ever written. Amy Little has done a super chat saying, pet attention treats, oh. late to the stream because I just got home from nursery. I presume I missed a joke of the stream. Oh. How are you guys today? Oh, Amy, don't you worry. Oh, Amy. <laughs> Amy, welcome. I've done like three or two, I can't remember. Uh, all of them archery themed. Yes, because I am painting an archer. Um, I thought I had another one, but I had a look at it and it's not very good. But I might tell it anyway. Yep. This one's for you, Emmy Little. Wow. Sorry that it's not as good as the other Here's ones. Here's a joke I don't like. It's for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still good. It's just not as good okay. after the last ones. Did you hear about the time Orion, Orion lost an archery match? No. He was given a constellation prize. Hey. Orion. Orion. Oh, whoops. See, I had a feeling I might mispronounce that, and that's why I was, like, very... Um, Apprehensive to <laughs> well, that that's that's like, wait, what? I don't. Oh, Orion. <laughs> uh, Luke says the werewolves. I'm, I'm not a native English speaker, okay? Give me a break. Luke says the werewolves need to look out for him. <gasps> How dare he? But, I mean, that presupposes that we're the werewolves. It's war. That's it. It's war. Beef, 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 <laughs> beef. And uh, now everyone go over and just write beef in caps. No, oh, uh, well. <laughs> No, so <laughs> no, no. That was that was genuinely me being like, no, don't do that. But then I heard a noise in my ear, and it was uh, the horse bolting. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be done. It really doesn't. <laughs> that man has to be put in his place. <laughs> wow, Jesus. <laughs> Joking, I love Luke. He's great. <laughs> okay. He's got it coming. <laughs> he had it coming. <laughs> he really had it coming. Has anyone done a gritty East End or male reboot of Chicago? Probably not. Here's my chance. <laughs> I'm resigning on Monday, everyone. I'm going to become a dramaturg. A thespian. <laughs> From the island of Thespos. <laughs> <laughs> Little Greek joke there for you, lads. Honk, honk. <laughs> Greece is great. Got some nice islands. My favourite musical. Oh, there, you go. Yeah. there it is. Yeah. Uh, I've never been to Greece. No, I've been to Greece. Greece. We got something. Working on boats. Ooh. Working on boats. <laughs> Scraping off barnacles. No. no. I was a I was a first mate. <laughs> you were a first mate on a boat. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. On a yacht. You've lived a very storied life, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie's yeah. got to go. Fairly well, Ronnie. Hi. You have lived a, a varied life. You've had many jobs, all of them interesting. I mean, maybe not all of them. You probably found one of them boring. Well, this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's been it's been fun times. Emmy Little's done a uh, super chat with an animated Shiba Inu uh, laughing. Oh, I the, love that. Shiba. The animated text says "ha ha ha." So Emmy obviously loved my joke. Mm. There you go. Got a hair on my screen. Get off! Get off there. Alex Samara says Johnny. When traveling becomes a thing again, go to Greece. It's amazing. Okay. Cool. Johnny! Done. Johnny! Done. Cops. And there was an exclamation mark. 
Oh, yeah. um, my favourite island that I've been to is Ios, and I spent my one of my birthdays there, and it was amazing. So if anyone has any plans to go, that's a recommendation of mine. Um, it seems like a nice place to sort of just wander around, um, because I don't... When it comes to holidays, when people are like, we're going to be up at this time, we're going to go here, and then we're going to visit this museum, and then, you know, we're going to break for lunch, blah, blah, blah. Like, high, highly organised fun just puts me off. Um, mm. So I took a holiday okay. for a few days. It was, my friends were getting married in uh, Titignano in Italy. So we decided, sort of in Perugia. Mm -hmm. So we went to Rome for a few days and then traveled on to the wedding. Uh, and we didn't really have uh, a schedule in, in Rome. So we just sort of wandered around, did very little actually, just sort of wandered, went to the same uh, trattoria like every night and just sort of had low key fun. And it was wonderful, like it was so relaxing. So kind of mm -hmm. that's what I look for on a holiday is like interesting place to walk where you don't get FOMO, but you also don't have to yeah. do anything. Uh, yeah. And I think Greece seems like a nice place to just sort of wander around. Yeah, it's very chill. I um, I'm very much like I find myself right in the middle of like because there's like I feel like there's two archetypes of people who holiday. There's the people who are like I'm going to spend an entire week, uh, entire week, an entire week. <laughs> on the beach just doing absolutely nothing yeah. and then you know drunk and food or whatever and then there are people who are like i'm gonna see literally every tourist location physically possible yeah in the, the amount of time i have i'm right in the middle where i'm like Look, i want to see lots of cool stuff but also i might just fall asleep for two hours so I just... <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i love i love exploring but i also love just sitting by a pool for a couple of hours and just dying in the heat and then cooling off every now and again. I, I'm very much the same. Yeah, yeah. I, I do not deal well with heat, as you probably can tell from everything I've said on this stream so far. <laughs> I cannot stand chilling on the beach and sunbathing. I have to be doing something. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. I find it really bland. Right, I'm ready to shade. So I'll show you these two. I have. Shade. Done the rest of the skin tone, and I've look, faced the wet. Motion to change week to week. Sorry, Go, sorry, I didn't realise you were doing a thing there. It's fine. It's all right. It's just showing off some rats. I'm bad. I'm Focus. Bad. It focused on my dirty fingernails. Great. Been good, mate. Back, back, back. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right with them. I'm all right with them. Uh, and I'm gonna actually. Wheels, this this might interest you. Where's, oh no, where's it gone? No! Simon, Wheels, I was like, he's right there, it's okay! <laughs> uh, no, where's Wheels gone? He's <laughs> on the other side of the room. Uh, I have a, a, a specific, uh, perfectly sized piece of blue tack that I now jam on the bottle of shade bottles. Uh, so I shake uh, them and uh, then uh, stick them to my desk. That's a good idea. Mm. I was literally just thinking, like, like look how little non I have. Yep. Yeah, like 70% of that just went on my table. Yeah, I um, had to buy a new pot of Agrax Earthshade this week because that. Yeah. It's all repeats. You guys are so silly. You're silly. You you just wait, my friend. You wait till you get one of those big boy pots. <laughs> yeah. You'll think, oh, I'm going to have shade forever. No. <laughs> The bigger the pot, the harder they fall, as the old saying goes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you'd have any questions for that one, Tony. No. <laughs> Sorry. You're right there, mate. <laughs> I'm getting these like random hiccups lately. I'm just... Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hiccup McGee. Time to shade a couple of rats. At least shade dries quickly in this summer. Mm -hmm. It's not like when you have to sort of sod off for half an hour while you're... I'm starting on my shading as well. Snap! Hey, hey. Shade gang. Shade gang. We don't like the heat, so we're always in the shade. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's quite sweet, actually. A bunch of my friends, uh, but also especially my wife, know that if we're going to the park to sit somewhere, uh, they all just automatically look for somewhere that's on the border of their shaded area, so I can sit in the shade and they can sit in the sun. <laughs> also, we're really shady. 
to each yeah, other. Yeah, true. It's nice, nice to be known, isn't it, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it's terrifying. Mm. Is there anything... It's hard to be in here. Yeah, yeah. The terrifying vulnerability of being loved. <laughs> Keeping it right. Keeping wow. it breezy. Sorry. So deep. So deep. <sighs> 2020. How about that? That's a year. So and also a vision. Is that the right word? Uh, yesterday I was talking to Alex Meehan about uh, Transformers the movie, uh, not the Michael Bay ones, the uh, the film that was uh, released in the, eight, either 85 or 86. It was also... really El Toro one. <laughs> uh, with a unicorn on the planet eating robot, yeah, yeah uh, which was voiced by Orson Welles in his last ever cinematic role. Um, it's wonderful. It has a banging soundtrack. So basically to get me and me and Pump... You got the touch! Exactly. To get... Uh, myself and me and pumped up to write some news yesterday. I was like, here, have a bang on these. So I sent her Dare and The Touch by Stan Bush. Um, yeah, the of the and I'm losing my thread. Why did I start talking about this? Uh, because of 2020. That's it. <laughs> At the very start of uh, Transformers, the movie, the very first word spoken are a voiceover setting the scene. And they say, it is the year 2005. And it's so <laughs> futuristic, you guys. I remember watching that film again in 2005 specifically to be like, ha, ha, ha. and now that was 15 years ago. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a thing on Twitch where people just watch you stream yourself sleeping, right? I won't have a Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I mean, awesome. I know about Mukbang. Which is where people stream themselves eating. Yeah. Because I, I found a video yesterday uh, where it was a, it was a Denethor ASMR mukbang where they just cut all of the moments from him eating that chicken. <laughs> it's <returning laughs> <King Mubang. laughs> uh, and it's the funniest thing. They kept just showing shots of Pippin being like, <laughs> 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 Can you sing, Master Hobbit? Um, talking about cosplay actually with me and yesterday and uh talking about like you know i was, I was saying how i never really felt a character that i would I really want to um cosplay especially since you know a lot of them don't have beards and the ones that do it are just so generic that it's just really uninspiring um i would be te honestly tempted to shave my beard off so i could go to a con as denethor and just sort of sneak up on people and stand next to them with a bit of chicken and a tomato and be like, can you sing, Master Hobbit? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just upset people. The exploding tomato as well, which I feel, I feel like like put loads of people off tomatoes. My brother oh, and I come. still refer to those as Denethor tomatoes. But yeah. This is his favourite place to sit, by the way. I stretch my legs out. Oh, Emma Benson says, uh, I thought Twitch had banned the sleeping thing. Apparently it is against terms no. of service, but that might not mean anything. I am. Um, I went on a couple of nights ago just to see if anyone did like yoga on there. Mm. And nobody was oh, yeah. in the evening. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's late in the evening and nobody was doing yoga, but it was like people who search for yoga also search for this or something. And so there was at least one where there was like a girl just like sleeping. I don't know if she was actually sleeping, but like the whole thing was that like, if you donated a certain amount, it would make a really horrible noise and wake her up, Ooh. I guess. Um, I, I just popped in for like five minutes just to see what that was about. But what noise did you um, there was like, I don't, <laughs> don't know, but there was like, there was like, I don't know, 50 odd people watching her sleep. And I was like, wow. okay, this is a thing, I guess. Uh, Nathan Plummer asks, the last time I was completely clean shaven, it was 2010 or 2011. I think it was 2011. I was uni, so probably about 2014. Uh. Yeah, me, I was like probably like, <laughs> yeah. I graduated in 2009. From when was, when was the Brazil Olympics? King's College, London. The Brazil Olympics? Uh, not Sorry, not Olympics, World Cup, I mean. Is that 2015? 2014? Uh, when was the last World Cup? The last World Cup was two years ago. Yeah, it was 2014. 
Yeah, yeah that was third year of uni for me. <laughs> that was the year. That was the summer after uni for me. Oh, maybe it was second. No, it was second year. Second year of uni for me. Oh, no, no, actually, that can't be right because I left in 2012. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm just waiting for my shades to dry, guys. So we. Uh, um, any minute now. There was some chat about cosplay, and Emma said that she did Aloy from um, Horizon Zero Dawn. I think I've seen pictures of that. Actually, it's very cool. Uh, Alex Samaras says, "I don't cosplay myself. Why would you cosplay yourself? You want to cosplay over?" Uh, hey. None of your bitches. Uh, which is still one of my favourite uh, usernames to read out. It's in a super chat saying, Luke says he welcomes the war. <laughs> <laughs> I've won. Welcome our new Oxbox Overlord. <laughs> <laughs> That's fighting dark. I mean, I feel the thing is, I already feel like a nuclear power. Because I, I could just kill Dob. <gasps> Don't you dare utter I mean, those words. It's a That's blasphemous. It's a nuclear deterrent, not a nuclear plan. Mm. Rio Olympics was 2016, four years after London 2012. Of course it was. Chat, please please inform Luke of Johnny's I'm threats. I'm not going to kill Dob. <laughs> I had a thought you should, yesterday. You should actually. be aware. Yeah, if you're going to make a threat, you might as well actually make the threat to the person that it's threatening. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Was it? Okay. Adrenal says, so Wheels, when are you going to cosplay as Johnny? Um, I had a thought yesterday. You know when um, people have those um, Halloween costumes where it looks like they're being stolen by someone? Um, oh, yeah. you know, where the bottom, you to a person. Yeah, and then like they're carrying you. Uh, I was thinking oh, you should get one of those and make the top bit dob and then put myself in a papoose and I could go around as Alfred <gasps> Strange size. For, oh my um, god, yes. For Halloween. But I, then I think if I went to a party and people were like, what are you cosplaying as? I'd be like, oh, what, what's your costume? I'd be like, well, it's a character I made in the universe that I run. And then I'd get punched <laughs> in the face. And I'd deserve it. So. I feel like. Uh... Yeah, the chat's not on my side, are they? <laughs> 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 yeah. If you kill Dob, please make it really lame. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he something and bangs his head or something. Yep. I um like a few people from the office. I think um, Matt Clements is DMing, but they're playing a D and D campaign in Ghost of Salt Marsh. Um, and like they had, I think Tim, who's the the GM for Roll Over and Die, yep. was playing a character that they all really loved. It was really good. Um. And I think for some reason he couldn't use his arms or something, so he, he had to use Mage Hand for everything. Um, oh, yeah. Which is really cool. Um, but, like, his character died because they were in a house, and they were like, oh, we should look in the basement, even though we're done. And it was full of, like, level one spiders or whatever. But for whatever reason, his character died in that encounter. And I always hate that, like, like people who really stick to modules or, like, um, or like modules that are really unforgiving or stuff like that. It just means that your characters can die in the most mundane way possible. <laughs> it's like, how, oh, oh, man, how, how did it happen? Oh, well, uh, there was a spider in the basement. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. I mean, did I tell you about the uh, the way uh, my Hot War character Loxley died? I don't think so. He was part of, uh, basically, Hot War set in like the, the 60s in the UK after the Cold War went hot. Um, and so basically a lot of the UK is an irradiated mess and you're part of the special situations group kind of hunting down monsters and all this kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, there was a there was a facility with this, this technology that could open portals into other realms. It was not good. Uh, we went there to destroy it, but somebody activated it and it opened a portal. Uh, I was kind of like an engineer and I had built this bomb. So I set the bomb and wedged it in the machine and then something happened basically and the situation changed from suddenly we didn't want to be blowing up this machine just yet so then i tried to defuse the bomb and uh it exploded and i died yeah and i died outcome trying to defuse a bomb isn't there yeah i I, well, I died trying to defuse a bomb i had built and placed <laughs> that was quite funny it wasn't it was quite emotional actually i was really sad oh but it kind of fit his character arc, so you know it wasn't 
demos. But. Uh, Kirky Cat 94 has done a super, super chat saying, Killing Dob would be an awkful idea. <laughs> it would certainly be <laughs> awkward. Yeah, Angel Beat said, as a fan of both DB and Ox, this is an awkward situation. Watch the deal with fantasy race tropes. Okay, I think I think my shade's right. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Get back in the fight. Wow, Emmy Little says maybe chop Andy's hand off. He has mage hand. <laughs> uh. Yeah. All right. I mean, like, if you happen to have a crutch sitting around, doesn't mean you should break your leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, uh, come on, mate. Come on, long boy. Oh. Oh, okay. There's definitely some very dry shade. <laughs> cool. I always love how um, Noel Noel looks over silver. Yeah. Oh, I was actually I'm just doing like that now. Oh. I was like looking at all my shades, being like, "What goes over silver? What goes over silver?" And I thought, mm, "Maybe no, no, no." And then you said that. Well, there you go, there, mate. It's yeah, it's the winner. Right. It's like I actually I, learned I, something uh, from all you've taught me. <laughs> my ultimate top tip for anyone who's doing any kind of metallics: if you want the nicest looking gold you've ever seen, yeah, yeah, Hannah's gold. With Reichland flesh shade gloss over it is just the nicest shade in the world. Mm. Yeah, I missed that actually because I've used it a few times when we've been in the studio together, and now I have a different. I have a different gold here, it's and it's not from the starter set. Yeah, it's not as your nice as yours, um, yeah. and I miss yours. I think if you put flesh shade over it, it'll give it a lot more warmth. Yeah. Really helpful, Johnny. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just want. Yeah. <laughs> just let me say this. Yes. Oh. You know when you go to pick up a model and highlight a bit, and you realise you've already highlighted it. No. Can you imagine that happening? <laughs> well, I just did it twice. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, here's a question. I don't technically have a proper dry brush, but I really need to do some dry brushes. So I'm just going to wing it. But can you remind me how to dry brush? Yep. Is it like do? You... <laughs> what? I don't have a dry brush. That is dry brush. That's a dry brush. Isn't it? Is it? Have a look at. Does it say dry on it? It says base. Then it's a base brush, but it'll work. Oh, base brush will do. Yeah, if it's if it's nice flat. Yeah. One. Um, so do Looks I just quite... dip it into the paint and then I just rub it until like yeah you wipe most of it off so it's kind of worked into the bristles yeah you can test it on your on your on your hand if you brush brush it across your hand you'll see how much actually comes off okay. like after you've bristled it no not when you've just dipped it in paint because then you, you are just painting your hand <laughs> <laughs> right I'm doing gold tent all right, and Felix Soror says, "Learning in a dice breaker stream, we're as surprised as you are." <laughs> well, and... it's been it's been a few months Done to be fair. Good night, Torrels. <laughs> Something's gonna sink in eventually. Well, we'll see. Okie dokie then. Oh, Gehenna's gold, you are so pretty. Thank you, Miku. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Bob's Burgers recently and I just love how Bob makes stuff talk to him <laughs> that, I like Bob's as the minute it's my sort of happy retreat Bob's Burgers is one of those shows where it's like I don't actively put it on but I'd always watch it if it's on kind of thing I, um, I kind of tangentially feel very proud in a way when I watch Bob's Burgers because um a friend of mine, his name is Simon Chong, who's an animator, well he is an animator, but he was working in the UK um, as part of Explosive Allen Productions, which is the production company that came out of uh, some of the people who were on Inside Xbox when that got cancelled years and years ago. Um, but anyway, he uh, is a big Bob's Burgers fan, he also really likes Archer, and because Archer and Bob are both voiced by H. John Benjamin, 
he took all of the characters from Archer and animated them. He drew them as Bob's Burgers characters and animated them into into a Bob's Burgers skit, basically, where he just took audio from both shows and kind of made the, the two worlds collide and chat. And he put it on the internet. It went viral. And then he got uh, a tweet from one of the people who, like, basically runs the studio that makes Bob's Burgers, being like, ha-ha, this is cool. Do you want a job? Now he lives in LA oh, and he's a director hey. on Bob's Burgers. He started as um, a storyboard animator and then he moved to retakes director and now he just directs episodes. And the first time I oh saw his name as like director, Simon Chong, I was just like, ah, so cool. my friend. He also took the, um, the hello, my name is, my name is Elder Wright song from um, Book of Mormon and uh, animated that in South Park sort of style. Um, so yeah, it's, it's such a strange but wonderful thing. It's like a real, it's like I still get chills when I think about it. It's really cool. That's very cool. That's very cool. You have all your cool friends, Johnny. <laughs> He's really good friends with um, with the outside Xbox lot as well. Uh, Apparently, the OBS ghost is constantly resizing low loser. I swear I tweaked it, but... Uh, oh well. I thought I said, just do this thing, Johnny, and then you went, nah. <laughs> I did end up doing it in the end. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, the OBS ghost didn't didn't listen to me. OB. OB the OBS ghost. <sighs> well, the BS has got to stand for something. <laughs> Oh, BS! <laughs> that was good, I liked that. Mm. Witty. Witty! Hello. My name is Elder Johnny! Oh man, OBS just eat a courgette. Eat a turnip. There we go. <sighs> ah, Cookie Cat ninety four has finally got a decent sized screen, and so can see the stream in more than tiny vision. If you ask me, yeah. that calls for an update on how our miniatures are going. I'm just doing the ground work, the textured I am, flooring. I am adding gold trim to his shoulders Ooh, and his back. Oh, lovely colours. Yeah. And I. Hang on. Let's just do that. I'm going to put something behind it. Alpha. There you go. Very nice. A couple of rats. We'll post pictures of these. We'll do the usual thing where we tweet them, and then if you've been working on anything, we would love to see it in the replies. Because um, genuinely, it makes me really happy whenever I do a stream with people are like, well, while you were, well, you were tickling a rat with a paintbrush, I was doing this. Mm. I just went looking for a paintbrush that was, in fact, behind my ear. So that's good. That's very dad energy. <laughs> Walking into the room when, I don't know, we're like playing Xbox or something, and you're like, has anyone seen my paintbrush? And we're like, dad, it's in your ear. Michael, <laughs> have you seen my glasses? <laughs> All right, I'll show you mine now, because I kind of just said that, but I was like mid-painting. I'm really happy with this. This is maybe the best one I've ever done. Hey. Um, hey. It's not completely finished, but it's, uh, it's coming... Come along very well, I think. Nice. Yeah, it's good work. The other problem with Toto sitting in my lap is that now there's just his hair everywhere, which keeps getting mm. stuck in my paintbrush. <laughs> oh, mate. Sometimes uh, I will... Yeah, I will base a model outside, having just assembled it inside 
Yeah. And when I come to paint it, there is a hair from my cat's scalp just on it. Um, That's why. Uh, I swear to God, is. we can order food from outside, take it into the kitchen, open the container, and there will already be scout hair in it. It's just like, <laughs> how do you do this, cat? They just exist in the atmosphere, don't they? Like, it's mm. part of the, like, chemical makeup of the air around you. She's claimed my armchair in the sitting room, because our sofa's quite small. Um, I've got an armchair that I got dirt cheap, uh, and it is amazing. But uh, it's cauldroy fabric. It sounds, it looks better than it sounds. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, an original, it's, it's an original G-Plan armchair, and I got it for £25, thanks. Um, but yeah, it is the seat of it currently is completely white because Scout is just sunbathing in it all day long. Mm-hmm. She is a scamp. That's cats. Well, when life gives you lemons. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. It's one of my favorite lines, that. It's very good. Emmy Little's done another super chat oh. saying you missed one of my super chats. Oh, no. uh, chop Dob's ear off like the other great artists. That is, yeah. I'm amazed Dob hasn't voluntarily cut a piece of him off, actually. It's kind of his energy, feels like. Sorry we missed your super chat. Yeah. So I just went back and it was before the Andy hand chop thing. Oh, dang it. No, Sorry. No, I missed that. The problem with yeah, I have to say, um, one of my favourite things about Luke's like role-playing technique is his sheer voluntary willingness to be like harmed and put in horrible situations. Yeah, it makes me laugh every time. Like, you know, uh, there was one time I was like, someone is someone is sick or something, or the the room explodes yeah. in gore. And he's like, a lot of it gets in my mouth. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it's just like, without hesitation or explanation, it's wonderful. Um. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, uh, now, ladies. <laughs> yeah. What is cooler than being cool? Ice cold. We don't talk about temperatures again. <laughs> the theme of the week. Uh, if this week had a musical theme, that theme would just go. <laughs> this year has a musical theme. No, this year's musical theme would be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was one of those headphone exploding videos that you yeah. just recreated for us live. Uh, was it that bad? I leant back. Yeah, but I think. It sounded like it went directly into the microphone, so I don't know if yeah. the microphone's on your head. <laughs> no, there's no mic on here. It's this guy. This guy. I think. Sorry about well, that, everyone. Not. <sighs> God damn it, no, no. Your hair, in the words of Dashboard Confessional, your hair is everywhere. <laughs> so oh, oh no. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, the chat's not happy. <laughs> Sorry about my scream. It does crack me up when there's a delay in the chat, because then you're just like, oh, no, there's the reaction. That's exactly what we were, what we were expecting. Oops, Sorry. Uh, it still peaked out like mad. Sorry. I'm going to do it again. Mark. Mark. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, it is very, very 2020. <laughs> that... But that is the official 2020 song, to be fair, Johnny. <laughs> it's tinnitus. That's what it is. <laughs> anyway, bright and breezy, bright and breezy. We're fine, we're happy. I am. This is the best mini I've ever painted. Oh, yeah. My skills are coming along. Yeah. I have done something of worth this Shut year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a letter. Great, great time to get a super chat from Cookie Cat 94 You've got a letter. <laughs> Did I? 
<laughs> we've got a I telegram. <laughs> we've got a pigeon. I actually do have lots of pigeons around here. Wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, Cookie Out 94 says, for Johnny to never make that noise with the mic again. Sold. Yeah. I'm not an unreasonable man. <laughs> oh, we realized, actually, was it at during the last painted stream or was it during another stream where uh, somebody swore and... We got super chats because of it. I think for the the swear jar or something, and we're oh, like, yeah. oh, okay, maybe we should be swearing. <laughs> yeah, um, we were like, wow, this seems profitable. <laughs> Amy Little has done two Oxventure questions in chat. Uh, did Egbert regrow his kidney after drinking the potion? No. Uh, also, what Wait. happened to the thirty-seven baby Egberts? No, they died. Uh, they aged at a superhuman rate. I think they, we said that they'd gone to a retirement home, but. Uh, the dragonborn, right? Egbert's a dragonborn, yeah, but he drank he drank a potion made partly from himself. So um yeah. Uh he he drank it, spawned thirty seven miniature versions of himself, but they all age super super fast. So they should have uh, painted the stream. Say again? You should have painted them on our stream. Thirty seven mini Egberts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh. Sorry, what, what did you say? Miniature versions of himself. He should have painted them on our stream. Oh, yes. There we go. Sorry. There it yes. is. <laughs> oh, that was not worth the wait. <laughs> oh, apparently one of us dropped the B word. Oh, the B-U-M word? Yeah. I apologise if that was me. That is despicable. I don't know which one of us it was. I suspect it might have been me. Whoever it was, they're fired, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember saying it. I'm sorry if it was. Well, me. that sounds an awful lot like someone who said it would say. Would I say that? <laughs> Did I do that? Did I do that? What's that from? That's cool. Is that his name? Oh. Uh, Very warm. Very warm. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, that's right. It was Andy that made that cannon. But um, it was <coughs> genuinely my plan. They were meant to have a midlife crisis during the session that they were spawned, and then, oh no, the next session. And then uh, the dead of old age uh, after that. Uh, Johnny, my question is, did you have him roll a d100 for the number of mini eggbats? No, I rolled a d100. So a d100 was used. But I did it. It was me all no. along. <laughs> Kislev Flash. Kislev Flash. There it is. This is the problem with being a scaven painter. Is like, I'm nearly done with these. I'll be done in two minutes, and then it's like, well, what should I paint now? It's like more scaven. Yeah, more scaven. I think uh, this is why I play um, squad-based games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to paint 100 minutes. <laughs> Zizor hands um, has done a super chat saying, "I just wanted to thank you guys for these streams." I just got out of a horrible work situation today, and they helped a lot during a really stressful time. Uh, well, we're really mm. glad that A, you got out of that situation, but also B, that our work has been able to help. Um, that's, yeah, that's, um, yeah, this is a good thing. Uh, but they have a question. Uh, question, do you ever do anything special with your bases? Any tips? I very rarely put effort into my bases. I don't really like basing. Yeah. Um, I know some people absolutely love sort of the slapdash, slapdash, excuse me, nature of it, but it's never really clicked with me. What about you, Wheels? I've only done one good base. Well, no, sorry, three, but they're all pretty much the same. Um, do you know what? I'll go get it, because nice. I'm nearing the end of my painting. Oh, anyway. my Vermin Lord, I did base, I did coat the entire base in, um, in skulls. 
I am also getting my Vermin Lord. Your oh, skull base is incredibly cool. I'll be there in a second. The first time I, uh, I played it, uh, maybe I'll get mine. I just have to stay low. Uh, right, I think uh, I'm done. Uh, Johnny, we can see your bum. <gasps> you said it. You said the word. Yeah, well, it's actually on camera now. Yeah, but you can't say the words. People seeing that I'm not wearing trousers. <laughs> right, you go first. Yeah, so I've... Um, this is one of the only ones that I actually bothered to put any effort in. Uh, so it's got, like, scorched earth grass with little bits of stone. And then it already comes with that little rock thing, which I put on it. Um, but then you'll see I got, like, a white actual stone and then washed it with the um, hex... Hex Wraith Gloom or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. the X Wraith Flame, the, the green technical paint, and it turned it into like warp stone. It's pretty cool. Nice. And pretty much just any excuse for me to get this model out because it's one thing I've ever been proud of. It's really good. It's a lot, <laughs> paint job's a lot better than mine. This is my Vermin Lord. He's yeah, a that, corrupter, but you can see there, I glued each and every one of those skulls down individually. To be honest, I could do with washing them again. They've sort of gone, they're just very yellow. Got bleached. a bit bleached. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Uh, and um, oh, I said I said the B word. God damn it. Um, <laughs> no, I did because we saw yeah, you. Yeah. Bum. <laughs> you just said there it he goes again. again. Oh damn it. Um, he said it again. Uh, the first time I ever played this on the table, <coughs> I was playing at hate, and um, a guy came by and. Uh, complimented my friend's base on his um, Alari Ali Ever Queen, which is a really big, um, really big model. And then he was like, "Look at this guy! Though. What a dork!" And I was like, "Oh!" And he was like, "Yeah, look at him!" He said, like, "Oh, I've got to move. Hold on, let me pick up all my skulls." And I was like, "Oh!" And then he just he just left. I was like, "Okay, thanks." Um, One of my favorite stories of yours is about um, what you did to your friends. Uh... Nagash. Oh, model. Nagash. Yeah, <laughs> replacing it with um, with bad Nagash. That's not what we call him. We call him the S word, Nagash. Uh, Emmy yeah. Little has done a super chat saying, "Did you plan Egbert to drink the potion?" No, that was not my plan at all. Um, but I was I was delighted when it happened. It was very very funny. Um, yeah. Uh, so Nagash, the Supreme Lord of the Undead, is a model that's about this high. It's enormous, and it's a dude like floating, and he looks brilliant because he is the Supreme Lord of the Undead. Obviously, he looks quite imposing. Uh, my friend uh, got him... Actually, we got him, that guy, I think, for his birthday, maybe. Um, he painted him up, and he did a glorious job. And at one point, we were all giggling at what old Nagash used to look like because he just looks like a bit of a dork. He's just mm -hmm. like... He's got a real, like, gonzo clown skull face. being like, Meh! and he's got this little staff. Um, and we were laughing about it, and somebody found it on eBay, and they were like, ha ha, it could be yours for just £12. We were like, ha 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 ha. Then I went and bought it, um, and we were playing a game, and basically we invented the curse of, um, of Crap Nagash, whereby uh, he left the room and we replaced his actual good Nagash model with the crap one. And now he has to, this was a couple of years ago now, he has to keep hold of it until he can swap it for somebody else's model on the table. Uh, and if you get done by the curse of crap Nagash, you have to uh, you have to play out the rest of the game with that model. Um, <laughs> it's it's good fun. And that's the legend of crap Nagash. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm now applying my right right flesh aid gloss over my gold. Honk honk. Uh, Beautiful orangey tone. Yeah, flesh Orange is good. such a good colour. I love the sunset palette. Just really tickles me pink. And it's orange. Enough also goes into the sunset palette. There it is. It does. It does, ladies. And I love pink. <laughs> you should know that by now. I remember when we first got the sort of colour palette for Dicebreaker. Um... And I sort of sent an email to the design team saying, do we have like a sort of like main color yet? 
Uh, and they were like, no, whichever one you like, really. I was like, pink, 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 pink. <laughs> the coral pink is great. Yeah, the coral mm. pink is so nice. I love the, the color palette. Done a good job. Uh, Emmy Little says, what was the plan with the potion, Johnny? I don't know. I mean, well, I know what the bad guys had planned with it. They were going to inject it into people. But uh, in terms of what they were supposed to do with it, whatever they liked, really, there was no plan. Okay, what's that one done? Home stretch. Ah, don't get the wash on the cream. There we are. Uh, I finished my mini and now I'm just sitting here trying not to melt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very much a vibe, isn't it? <laughs> I'm about to be done myself. And then, yes, well, I shall also be doing the trying not to melt thing. 15 minutes, then we can all jump into a, into a separate cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually showered today, so that'll be a very good idea. Oh, little peek behind the curtain there. <laughs> I mean, we've already seen you in your pants, so like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's do some brown, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. True. yeah. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to deny it. I'm going to gaslight everyone watching. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's no pants on this stream. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday is no pants day, to be fair. That's what they say. Oh, Emma Boiler is in the chat. Society for more no yeah. pants days in the week. I am, and thanks I for am. complimenting my hair. I am. Come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> right, boom, two clan rats finished. Why has me and just said goodness wheel scandalous? <laughs> what have I done now? <laughs> because you said about the jumping into a shower. Set push out, I made it very yeah, clear because yeah. I knew it would be misconstrued intentionally by the chat. I was like, in separate showers. <laughs> but we're together in, in our hearts. Yeah, oh, look at that. It. It's so hard to show off miniatures yeah. on this stream. Yeah, webcam's I, I... not me. Oh, there, perfect, perfect. Okay. Absolutely perfect. Look at that. Very nice. There we go. Lovely stuff. CookieCat94 is on ones. a super chat and says, it may be hot there, but we are at minus four degrees Celsius in Oz. Take oh, me with you. Take me with you. What kind of glow is that? That's barely, it's barely even warm. <laughs> oh, minus four. Can you imagine? I'd love to, like, just have a room in my house that was minus four that I could just dip into for a bit, you know? So you want a walk-in freezer? Look... Yeah, like one of those, um, like, culinary ones, you know? Astrid is also welcome back in the chat anytime because she has also complimented my hair. <laughs> We should, we should the point criteria, out everyone's though. welcome in the chat. <laughs> so far, Lolis has commissioned three models from two of the chat and then also said you're only allowed to come back if you compliment her hair. Yep. These are the rules. There are no terms and conditions when you, uh, when, when, when what, you when subscribe you watch to the, the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, uh, you know... Uh, you know? Oh... But, Thank you for doing that. <laughs> <up. laughs> I came down for a second and I'm not sure I want to be caught up. No, <laughs> nothing honestly, happened. Literally nothing happened. That was kind of the joke, to be honest. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the eyes on the clan rat. Ah, the final step. Squeaky rear end time. Yeah. Two teeny dots. Okay. Burgy time now, eh? <laughs> Nathan Plummer says, Loli's also declared war on Outside Extra, which is very true. <laughs> yeah, you've really, really come out swinging on this stream, haven't you? Been out of control. <laughs> I mean, it's pop, of course, but... It's been a week, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> it really has. Right, one done. What, I or model? I. 
Two eyes done. Therefore, one model done. To be honest, doing the eyes used to scare the crap out of me, but uh, I'm not bothered anymore. Yeah. So, Karma you are. User it is. Yeah. <laughs> also, Skaven eyes are just red dots, whereas like it's human eyes where you've got to do an iris yeah, and a pupil and hope that they're not looking off into separate dimensions. That that's, is horrendous. That's scary. I've done... Um... I think the best eyes I've ever done are on some uh, Zinch Screamers. Because they have like big yellow eyes with like black cat slits. Um, yeah. Jason, those are the only ones I've ever done that look alright if they're not just a dot. Was there, was there just sirens? I don't hear them anymore. I feel like there might have been sirens just now. Yes, there were. Um, you, because Ronnie Fanta has said, whoop whoop, that's the sound of the police. <laughs> So. 13-12 can hear a siren in my background That might have been it Oh, um, maybe. Or maybe the police car is so fast That it drove past you <laughs> It's now you outside Where did I put Ah I moved a box To start the stream The box has got a thing I want to paint in it But it's over there I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not showing you that again Not unless you know well, I mean, people have seen the box. You're just not allowed to do anything with it, right? No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Different, different stuff. It's the terrain I took home. I was talking about showing you that again, as in my posterior. Oh, I thought you meant the embargoed box, no. <laughs> not your, not your I'm, chat. <laughs> I'm, you know what, Wheels? I'm going to deny that there even is an embargoed box that I may or may not have in my possession, uh, which I don't because it doesn't exist. Yes. Good talk. <laughs> Glad we got through that. Well. Um, Titan Uranus says, I'm going to paint an Nagash cream coloured because I like the sound of cream Nagash. Um, sounds like cream for a rash or something like that, which uh, makes it sound like an ointment. I think cream Nagash sounds more like... Um... Like spinach. <laughs> oh, maybe. I was thinking it sounds more like a bisque. Or like a chowder. Three more than a gash. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to super chat to see my pants again. Yeah, in regards to in regards to your earlier um uh bum flash, uh, inferiority suplex is saying, give us your only fans, Johnny. He's just, he's just casually <laughs> dropping the B word again. Right. I'm covering the camera. And I'm gonna go get <laughs> the thing I need to go get. <laughs> Support your local set. <laughs> oh, this is great. I need a fan. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> it's too warm, slowly. I know. Right. Too warm. Naughty. <laughs> Emma Benton says, I leave for a minute and come back to OnlyFans. What happened? I don't have an <laughs> OnlyFans. I don't have one. Johnny Chiodini happened. <laughs> Do you think my self-esteem is high enough for me to have an OnlyFans? Absolutely <laughs> not. Well, I mean, it might boost the self-esteem if you get some nice comments on it. Yeah, maybe. I reckon you would, you know. Mm. Get loads of nice comments. Let's, I mean, let's, I'm not starting an OnlyFans. <laughs> let's just nip that in the bud. Might be a uh, conversation with HR before that happens. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, to be honest, I have, I have great respect for anyone who does have one. I just don't have yeah. one. So, uh, anyway, now uh, it's... it's <laughs> getting really exciting in here. I'm going to paint a storage container. Oh, so, yeah, ooh, baby. 40k. Minutes. You're doing seven minutes. I won't do it in seven minutes, but I'll start shading it. Go on, do it in seven minutes. No. Six minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with no. Oh, this shade brush isn't big enough. I've got really big brushes here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is in fairness but a large brush I do have a big shade brush I just hate it I, I, oh. I use Cicel shade brushes occasionally for dry brushing but for shading I think they're awful um, right. they're just like the shade doesn't flow on or off the miniature in anything like the way I want it to so in fact I'll show you my shade brush it's this guy 
it's just this absolutely battered old brush. Like that's meant to be silver metal, but it's just endless layers of shade. And um, he's my favourite. So that. Uh, oh god, my back is killing me. Turn too much leaning over. Mm. Oh no. That's why I try and paint up by my chin. What? Don't, you don't have to read it out. I'm not That's gonna read it out. Let your anus come in because do yeah. not let your anus come in. I'm not reading it out. I'm not reading it out. I just, uh, I just. <laughs> please, if they're interested, it. please just refer to the tighten your anus comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna nip it in the bud and just remove that. <laughs> <laughs> You've been more untightened. <laughs> to be fair. Well, it wasn't a warning. I just wanted to remove it. <laughs> it's fine. Oh god. So according That's to the box on this terrain, you can just sort of shade this thing and then dry brush it and it looks like it's a storage container. I'm dubious. But That's are, you, are you trying it? They literally yeah. just clipped that exact storage container from the sprue. Oh. It's all that. Right. Herbert comes in. Are you um are you trying what they're saying though, Johnny, or are you Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm giving it a go. I'm just a bit I'm not sure. Mm. So I'm just putting two layers of shade on and then I'm pretty much done. Nice. So I'm I'm shading the, the blue handles on his on his weapons. It's non oil and then I'm using a carabo crimson to shade the pink Nice. I own carabo crimson but I hardly ever use it. I yeah, it's, find a, very it's a niche little, one. It's too garish. Yeah. <laughs> really love Dricky Violet though. Dricky Violet's a really nice shade. You get that. Yeah, and um, lovely pink ghost color. Uh, yeah. Drakenhof Nightshade is fun. Yeah, it's the blue one. That yeah. was really decent. Ooh. I need to get another. Oh, yeah, that actually. <gasps> any chance of a Bob Ross style fantasy landscape painting? <laughs> I don't know if any of us are self proclaimed painters, to be honest. We're just miniature painters, really. You could just watch enough of them that you're confident that you could do your own scape. You could plan yeah. it out. But I have to just do it like Bob Ross. By just beating the devil out of it and just making it work. Beat the devil out of it. Yeah, that was going. That's a good quote. Mm. One of us needs to have like some random squirrels. Yeah. You get uh, honey like a, a squirrel outfit. <gasps> She'd hate it. <laughs> I knew you'd love it though. <laughs> and that's honey yeah, not in this heat though. No, God no. Isabel is embroidering a pair of pants at the moment. Oh. Is that American pants or English pants? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. We did talk about Johnny's pants. Yeah, I don't call them pants either. Shouldn't be calling my pants anything. <laughs> Not your pants, just pants in general. Oh, general. General. General you know. of the Fifth Regiment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will actually work. Let's just shade it and dry brush it. It's good to know. Just straight from the grey with no base base colour. Oh no, this is um based it's primed in grey. Okay. Um I guess you just prime it the colour you want it and then Yeah. It's, it's, do the it's meant thing. to be primed in Mechanica's standard, which I think I have a can of, but I just used ninety nine P yeah. Car auto paint for it instead. Because, spoiler alert, it's the same stuff. <laughs> yeah. It was English pants, by the way. It was. Two jobs. Wow. Oh, All right, well, it is one minute to five in the afternoon here in the United Kingdom of Great Britain. <laughs> and from all of us here at the BBC. <laughs> we will start saying our goodbyes. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on this paint stream. It has been varied. Um, 
but hopefully you had fun. Thank you for, to everyone for, for watching and for being so involved in the chat uh, and for the generous super chats. Uh, and yeah, uh, we hope you have sort of a, a lovely evening or day or afternoon, depending on your time zone or you know, um, when it um, is you're watching this. Woo! Um, yeah, don't forget that you can subscribe to Dicebreaker uh, to get plenty more tabletop content. There's also Dicebreaker.com, the website where the words live. Uh, if you want some merch, you can go to Dicebreaker.myshopify.com and adorn your torso with dice, your <laughs> dice breaker <laughs> t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go away now and try and reconstruct our brains because yeah. I think we're all suffering a little bit in this heat. So um, thank you all again for watching. Here comes a picture of my dog. Um, Yay! Uh, thanks and have a lovely day. Goodbye. Bye.